America faces a reckoning. People are demanding their voices be heard, calling for a path to economic and racial justice. Now is the time for a new deal that paves the way for a better future. This is why we can't wait. Before this pandemic began in March 2020, young people, especially young people of color, face an uphill climb to economic stability. Where are the jobs? The questions are easy, but cutting through the noise and getting noticed, that's tough. From 2016 to 2020, America's unemployment and poverty dropped overall, but the rate of unemployment for young people was almost double. So was the poverty level for most young adults of color. Consider this, in 2018, nearly three quarters of young parents earn less than $43,000 per year. It's hard to support families on that, and the cycle of poverty moves from generation to generation. Young people often hold lower paying jobs. They are the hourly workers at restaurants and stores, and when the pandemic hit, those businesses were among the first to be shut down. To help, the federal government passed the CARES Act, which provided stimulus checks and enhanced unemployment benefits, but 90% of young people who lost their jobs could not take advantage of this relief because it wasn't set up with them in mind. Stress and instability take a steep toll, and when they do, young people have a difficult time finding mental health resources. In 2016, well before the pandemic, three quarters of a million young people in America said they needed mental health help, but they couldn't get it. Two years later, that number rose to more than one million people. Today, 60 to 80% of young people report symptoms of depression, the numbers are particularly high and alarming for Asian American young people. Adding to their struggles, many young people don't have health insurance. In 2018, more than 14% did not. That is almost double the national average. So many barriers stand in the way of healing. Discrimination, income inequality, and underfunded services and programs are just a few obstacles that keep people from getting healthy. This pandemic has blown open the brutal disparity between who policymakers are helping and who they're not. Young people are often left out with very few resources specifically for them. Many communities know the sound of sirens all too well. Police unfairly stop too many young black men and arrest too many black young women in their communities. Similarly, young black and brown men die at the hands of law enforcement more often than white men. Schools are frequently seen as safe havens, but sometimes they're where the problem starts. Consider these facts. Native or Pacific Islander children are arrested at school at more than two times the rate for white children. That rate goes up even higher for black students. The trauma law enforcement violence causes in communities of color the trauma families go through after losing loved ones cannot be ignored or overstated. We cannot sit by and allow families of color to feel unsafe in their own communities. For far too long, we have invested in institutions that don't help our young people or communities be safe. For example, federal funding for workforce training services fell from $24 billion in the 1970s to just $5 billion today. But at the same time, state funding for corrections soared, and police budgets jumped astronomically. Imagine how different our nation would be if we invested the same amount of time and money in infrastructure and policies that build up our communities. Our future depends on investing in this generation to finally achieve the goals of racial and economic justice. It's time for a deal where young people design the policies and guide the decision making. A deal that builds systems for well being, healing, and safety. A deal that recognizes and celebrates the fact that today's young people are the most racially and ethnically diverse group in our history. It's time for a new deal for youth. This is why we can't wait.